we will now start with the actual process of digestion. We have seen the complete alimentary canal, its parts and the glands like liver and pancreas also. Before we start uh, the actual steps involved in the process of digestion, we would write down the composition of various juices and the digestive enzymes which they have. So the first one that we let us start with digestive juices. So first one is the saliva. In saliva there are many things which are present like lysozyme, mucus and all. Here we are writing only those things which are going to help in digestion. So in saliva is present an enzyme which is called salivary amylase. It is an alpha amylase. Alpha amylase means it is going to break the alpha glycosidic bonds. This amylase breaks alpha glycosidic bonds and that is why we are able to digest all those carbohydrates which contain alpha bonds and the ones which have beta bonds we are not able to digest because we do not have beta amylases in our body and for working of this salivary amylase chlorine ions are also essential which are also present in saliva so as we said, we are not talking about other things. So the enzyme which is there is salivary amylase. The next thing or next digestive secretion is in the stomach and it is known as gastric juice. In gastric juice also, there are various things and we will write down the enzymes. The enzymes are secreted in the form of inactive uh, enzymes or proenzymes. They are to be activated. So that is pepsinogen. This is inactive pepsin which needs to be activated. Prorenin. And both are proteolytic enzymes. They are proteolytic. That means they would break down the peptide bonds or would help in protein digestion. Both are inactive. They first need to be activated. And for their activation, hydrochloric acid would be required, which is also there in gastric juice. In gastric juice, there is also a lipase. And we call it, call it mild gastric lipase. This is a fat digesting enzyme. So in saliva is carbohydrate digesting enzyme. In gastric juice there is protein digesting as well as a fat digesting and this fat digesting enzyme is a very mild one because its action does not take place at this uh, low pH that means an acidic pH. The third thing, now we are talking about all those juices which are there in or which are poured in the duodenal part. Let us start with bile. Bile contains many things. We have written the composition of bile when we were talking about the structure and functions of liver. Bile contains bile acids, bile salts, and these salts are the ones which help in emulsification of fat. Emulsification of fat. Emulsification of fat is breaking down a bigger piece or drop of fat into tiny droplets. Here, the bonds are not broken. So it is not a digestion process. It is just a mechanical breakdown where a bigger piece is broken down into tiny pieces so that the enzymes can work on it. One thing that we have to remember here is in bile there is no digestive enzyme.
but bile is essential for the process of digestion to take place because unless and until the fat is emulsified lipases will not be able to act on these fat molecules and bile acids we have written the name cholic acid deoxycholic acid and chino uh, deoxycholic acid salts also we wrote three names one was sodium bicarbonate then sodium glycocholate and sodium taurocholate plus there are pigments also so we are not writing all those things then let us come to the next one the fourth thing pancreatic juice pancreatic juice produced or secreted by the acinal cells of pancreas and here we are talking of only the digestive uh, juices it contains again certain protein digesting enzymes in their inactive form so this is trypsinogen this is inactive trypsin chymo chymo trypsinogen again inactive chymotrypsin both are protein digesting enzyme there is one more which is called carboxypeptidase now we need to understand one more term here we have been writing that this is a proteolytic enzyme these three are also proteolytic that means they are going to act on proteins and such enzymes are known as peptidases proteolytic enzymes are called peptidases and these peptidases are of two types one endo peptidase and exopeptidase and exopeptidase endo both of peptidases whether it is endo or exopeptidase they would break the peptide bond the only difference is endopeptidase would always act on the inner peptide bonds so it acts on inner peptide bond that means if there is a long chain of amino acids or a polypeptide chain containing say 100 amino acids so these enzymes that is proteolytic enzymes but endopeptidases they would always act on the inner peptide bond resulting in breaking down that bigger chain into smaller chains in this case or after the action of endopeptidase amino acids will never be released as compared to that exopeptidase it always acts on terminal peptide bond and if it acts on the terminal bond that is suppose we say this is one amino acid the next one the next one the next one and so on endopeptidase would break this resulting into formation of smaller peptide chains whereas endopeptidase would always act on the terminal bond releasing the amino acids so out of all these which we have written trypsinogen chymotrypsinogen they are endopeptidases whereas carboxypeptidase is exopeptidase and these two are endopeptidases here also pepsinogen proranin they are endopeptidases that means they would break the bigger protein uh, chain or polypeptide chain into smaller chains so trypsinogen is there which is inactive chymotrypsinogen carboxypeptidase there is pancreatic amylase again this is also an alpha amylase then pancreatic lipase and one more enzyme which is going to act on nucleic acid it is called 
nucleases. So all these are present in pancreatic juice. Now the last one is intestinal juice. Intestinal juice is the succus entericus which is the combined secretion of crypts of Leiberkuhan and Brunner's plants. Now here also there is a long list of enzymes which are there. There is one substance which is known as enterokinase. This substance it doesn't act as an enzyme but it is used or it acts as an activator of trypsin. So this trypsin which is produced is, is activated by enterokinase. It is also known as enteropeptidase. Then there are disaccharidases. That means the ones which are going to act on disaccharides like lactase, sucrase, maltase. These are going to break the disaccharides into monosaccharides. There are few more enzymes like limit dextrinase. This is going to act on limit dextrins which are smaller carbohydrates. Uh, there is one more which is called isomaltase. It should also have been here in disaccharidases. So there are and there is something which is going to activate trypsin, other enzymes and few more intestinal lipase and two enzymes which are going to act on the DNA parts. They are called nucleotidases and nucleosidases. So there are many enzymes, one more endopeptidase which is amino like this carboxypeptidase, this is also an endopeptidase. It is called aminopeptidase. And their roles are decided. That means these are going to act on disaccharides. This will act on the terminal bond, terminal peptide bonds. These two are going to act on nucleic acids. This one would act on lipids or fats. So these are the main five, rather all five types of digestive juices and their enzymes which are going to help in the process of digestion. Now after understanding the composition of all the juices and the type of enzymes and the names which are given to them, we will start with the process of digestion.